Hi, so thank you very much for joining our marine and wildlife conservation uh, presentation today. Uh, my name is Fraser, so I'm a volunteer manager working for Travel Tier, and today I'm just going to be running through our programs, a little bit about how you guys can get involved as well. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen now um, so you guys can see a presentation that we've actually made up for you. So you should all be seeing this presentation here now. So um, this is actually an image here on the left that's taken in our village, Hikadua. Um, it's actually a really beautiful Buddhist uh, monument and you can go and visit in your time when you spend doing our programs. So a little bit about us. So Travel Tier has uh, been around now for around about six years. Uh, as an organization and what we basically provide is high impact volunteering abroad in Asia but also the opportunities to travel the country that you're visiting as well so you can combine both the travel and volunteering together. We also give lots of fundraising support from the UK as well. Our aim is to create brighter futures for children in local communities doing different programs like sports and English and community work but also most importantly promoting wildlife and environmental conservation. That's why you guys are really trying to find out more information today. And since our launch, we've actually now taken over 800 volunteers from around the world to do our several different projects and different locations that we work in. And since our launch as well, we've actually helped raise over 100,000 pounds to our charity, which is called Travel Tier Impact. Um, and I'll be explaining a little bit more about the fundraising today and how you guys can actually contribute uh, to reach in and pushing that target further and further. So the university placements that are available for you guys are very, very flexible. We understand that some of your courses do require a whole year placement, whereas some you can just take off in the summer breaks or Easter breaks. So we give a real kind of big wide range of choice. So you can come from anywhere from January till the end of September for a minimum of two weeks and a maximum of nine months. So you can really choose how long you like to do. The reason why we have the over 18 uh, section in this part as well is because you might have some friends or family outside the university that might wanna get involved. They can as well, they can do any of our programs, but they just need to be over the age of 18. And the living costs for our trip, which is the accommodation, food and transport is 24 pound per day. And I'll be explaining through that a little bit more throughout the presentation. So Sri Lanka, this is actually the country that we launched Travel Tier in. Um, so we've been working here for, like I say, five to six years, and we do some fantastic programs, which you can see down the right of the screen. But Sri Lanka itself is a very beautiful country. Um, it's just located off the uh, coast of India. It's a small island, but it's nicknamed the Jewel of Asia. And you can see why. It's got beautiful golden sands and palm fringe beaches. Um, so we actually live very, very close to the, even this bit, beach that's in the image here, um, only about 100 meters away. So you guys can really, really easily access it. So obviously, predominantly, I'm going to be running through the wildlife conservation today. But we also run an English, sports, healthcare, and also textile and design program. These are things you can actually add on to your trip as well. So if you did want to find out a little bit more about any of these programs, feel free to jump on our website and you can look at all the different booklets and information and videos that we have for each of these programs. But as you guys are trying to find out a little bit more about the wildlife conservation, that's what I'm really gonna focus on today. And this might be because you're part of a society that focuses on conservation or animal care, or it could be something you're studying at university as well. So this is perfect for anyone who's looking to go into the sort of environmental field in the future, um, maybe into research or conservation or anything like that. And this gives you a really great first-hand experience into lots of different issues and how they're dealt with as well. So you can see here on the left, our achievements up to date. So actually helping release 20,000 turtles back into the wild, planting 4,500 trees into the different rainforests in Sri Lanka, collecting 2.3 tons of plastic from ocean beaches. And to date, we've actually now taken over 620 volunteers to do this actual program. Travel Tears Marine and Wildlife Conservation Program. Help protect the environment in Sri Lanka.
So moving forward, the aims are quite clear to continue boosting sea turtle numbers through the different methods that I'll be explaining through today. Replanting these indigenous rainforests that actually help combat the deforestation this country is facing and also recycle marine debris. Um, so each of these I'll be explaining through for you. Firstly, the turtle sanctuary. Um, so this is a really amazing program. Obviously, it's very popular with volunteers because you do get to work hands on with these endangered animals. They are unfortunately endangered due to human causes. Um, so we have two set sub projects within this hatchery, which we do to really boost their numbers. The first one is actually looking after sea turtle eggs. The reason why we look after the eggs inside the hatchery is because people actually go to the beaches in Sri Lanka, steal them and then sell them on the black market for food under the belief that if you eat it, it can increase your life expectancy because turtles can live for a very long time, sometimes up to 150 years old. Obviously, that isn't true. Um, so we collect the eggs ourselves. We then take them back to the hatchery, which is still on the beach, but in a protected area. 45 to 50 days later, depending on the species, they hatch. We give them a good meal and then we put them back in the ocean. So it eliminates any of that activity of them being potentially stolen away and sold on the black market. The other side of it is looking after the adult injured turtles. So we find that injuries are typically coming from human causes like boat propellers, poaching, um, what's really common really is fishing nets and plastics. And we have a scheme with the local fishermen, bring the turtles to us, we then care for them, applying any medicine, so antibiotics or any sort of uh, antiseptic. We then feed the turtles throughout the time, we wash their tanks, we keep them swimming in the ocean, obviously making sure they don't swim too far out because just yet they're not ready, they will die of exhaustion quite quickly. And then what we do is when we know they're fully ready to go back into the ocean and is that point of survival is at their best, we will then release them back in there. And the reason why that's so important is because firstly, if you left a turtle in the ocean with some of the injuries that we find or where they're like wrapped up in the nets, obviously they would quickly die of starvation or from exhaustion. But also another reason why it's so important is because the chances of a baby turtle from an egg go into an adult size is only 2% right now, which is critically, critically low. So if an adult has already reached that stage where it will be laying eggs already or, or will be very soon, it's important that we do prioritize its survival so it can go back into the ocean very soon to continue boosting the numbers for the species. So that's basically why we run this program. We also do lots of research, but it's lots of maintenance work as well. So just helping make sure the hatchery can run very smoothly. The next one is our rainforest replantation. So deforestation, a lot of you know what it is. It is a big issue around the whole world. Obviously one of the big contributors to what's happened with the global warming situation. But in Sri Lanka, what we're really seeing as a problem is habitat destruction. Sri Lanka is an island, meaning that the ecosystem is very, very delicate. And when you put something in that's not from there, which is basically called non-indigenous, that will have a very, very detrimental effect and that's what's happened in Sri Lanka. Um, in the colonial times, lots of pine trees were planted and this wiped out huge areas of the jungle as it doesn't support the local wildlife and it's very dominant. So what we do as a team is work in a tree nursery where we look after all the baby trees. They're basically called saplings. So we help sort them, we water and weed them all. And then when they're ready, about, you can see the height in the image here, we then take them to the affected areas to then be planted. Um, it's a really cool place to be working, really. You get to be right in the middle of the jungles. You get to see all the different animals that live there, monkeys and birds. We'll also be guiding you guys around the jungle so you can learn a lot about all these species that exist here. Some of them actually only exist in Sri Lanka as well. It's really, really cool. And um, we also go a step further. We actually build artificial habitats for the critically endangered animals to take these to the affected areas as well. And then we put these on the trees or put these in the, uh, for like bird nest boxes and it will actually help support their numbers further and further. <clears throat> the next one is the beach cleans. So quite self-explanatory and quite easy. Basically what we do is walk up and down, collecting up as much plastic waste from the beaches as we can to then dispose of it properly, as it is causing a massive issue in the oceans, as you all probably know already from the amount of campaigns that we see everywhere now, which is great to see that people are really getting awareness about it. But there is still a lot of plastic entering. So what we do is remove it all, 
we sort through the waste, we find which actually can be sent into different recycling centers. One of them we actually can send it to, we'll make these into bracelets. So melt the plastic down into these sort of bracelets and then we sell them to fundraise for our charity. So taken that said had a very negative impact to now having a positive impact. And you can see just in the image here, a team of three who was set on this beach managed to collect over a hundred kilograms in about two hours, which is quite shocking but it just shows you how much work we really need to be doing. And the last project with the wildlife conservation is the agriculture. So here we are working in schools, planting fruits and vegetables. When that all comes to harvest, the school can actually then sell that in local markets. All the money that then generates can then buy more school supplies, like books and pens, and just help the running of it. But also, we can also educate the children about environmental issues and how in their own life they can become more environmentally friendly as well. So taking a really proactive approach to all the issues that they're facing in regards to plastics and turtle eggs and so on. And just to mention, every programme I've just mentioned, the, the turtles, the rainforestry plantation, the beach, and this one here, agricultural project. If you join the wildlife conservation programme, you get to do all of them in your time you're there probably spending about three to four times per day visiting it, uh, sorry, per week, you visit each of the programs. So each day is split into doing program in the morning, program in the afternoon, and it lasts about six hours. And then you get your evenings and then your weekends as your free time. So our volunteer programs, like I say, they run from Monday to Friday. And then with your weekends, you can actually fill them with some really amazing activities as well. So this image is actually taken in one of the evenings. Um, people normally head straight down to the beach after their programs to play a bit of volleyball, watch the sun go down, and then you can head back to the volunteer house to have your evening meal. With the weekends themselves, as there's no programs, you can fill these up with surfing lessons or elephant safaris, mountain treks. If you're really enjoying the food, you can get some cooking lessons as well. Um, so you can book these all in the country and there are more information about each of these activities is also on our website as well. So the benefit for you guys, firstly, experience. So for a lot of you, this would be the first time that you are taking that big step to travel to another continent like Asia, but also doing this as kind of like a solo traveler. And it's a really fantastic way to expose yourself to new experiences and also take yourself out of your comfort zone as well. The culture, the people, the food, the wildlife is all very, very different. And it's a really amazing way to learn about a new kind of culture. This leads nicely into transferable skills because the things you'll be learning there, firstly, like the very specific stuff, like you'll be learning from all the programs that you're doing, but also stuff like teamwork, leadership, networking with communities and also other volunteers you've never met before. This is very, very beneficial for your future employability. So what employers want these days is more than just your university degree on your CV. They want to see that you've actually had some real life experience in a workplace or a volunteering role. And what we do really hits that nail on the head because you get a lot of experience in a kind of different country. And it's a great talking point. A lot of employers will ask you lots of questions about what you did here. And especially if it's degree related and you're going to be going into that sort of job related skill as well. And that is the last thing. The last point is travel tier coordinator and intern. So, all our staff uh, have pre been previous volunteers. They came out for a few weeks of their volunteering and they were really, really interested in the program. So they came back the next year or that summer to do a long-term volunteering placement as a coordinator with their expenses actually paid for by Travel Tier. Um, so that myself, I actually did that. I joined the program for three weeks uh, back when I was 18. I got really, really interested in it. And that led into me being able to do 10 months in the country working for Travel Tier which has now led into a full-time job helping support them in both Sri Lanka and also in the UK as well. And what we really pride ourselves upon is the support that we will give you for your trip. So firstly, the pre-departure will be here to help talk through how to set everything up in regards to flights, visas, insurance, vaccinations, and so on. We'll also be giving all your in-country support so when you're on program and around the house, you have both our Western and also Sri Lankan team just running through any questions or queries, some translation sometimes, which you don't find is needed too much, but it's nice to always have someone to talk to um, if any need any help at all. So I'm gonna really briefly run through the um, 
costs and also how to get involved now as well. So if you were interested, the only thing you pay anytime soon is the registration fee, which is £159. So this is here to cover our UK operation costs so we can actually continue working as a charity abroad in Asia. But what it actually allows us to do from the UK is help fully support you, preparing you for, like I say, all the elements of the trip, but also you can select your dates. And this is really important because they are done on a first come, first serve basis, and they do tend to fill up quite quickly. So once you do register, you can actually make sure you get the dates that you wanted. This is only a one-time payment. So once you have done it, you will get unlimited access to all our volunteer projects for the rest of your life. Um, we have lots of people that do it once and then want to visit one of our programs again in Sri Lanka, maybe even Nepal or even the Maldives, where we also volunteer. And we'll also be sending you a volunteer pack, which has one of these nice T-shirts on, a nice wristband, booklets and other things to help you prep for your trip and also support you through your fundraising. And like I said, this is the first step to join Travel Tier. And what's included in this is our travel with confidence policy. So this COVID situation has made travel obviously quite difficult over the last few months. A lot of people might have had some plans cancelled and every day you get that country you can or can't visit to recently. So we wanted to ensure this is a completely stress-free but also a financially safe booking for you. So with the travel with confidence policy, this allows you to change your dates and choose your dates as many times as you like for no fee attached. So let's say you were joining us in June next year on our program and you decide that you did want to <coughs> change it a couple of months due to a personal reason. We would help you do that for no fee attached and it's really, really nice and easy. Also, if we got to a trip next year and unfortunately we couldn't run it because the FCO weren't allowing travel at that time, we'd also be able to change your dates, but also offer a refund back on your living costs if you've paid them up to that point as well. So this just ensures that you will have no problem when you're booking this in regards to maybe if it did get cancelled, um, you would always have it covered. And <clears throat> we are very confident about programmes next summer <clears throat> running as normal because of the lot of safety precautions and other things in place to ensure that travel will be nice and easy at this point. So I'm going to run through the living costs now as well. Um, so to give you a brief idea, it's £24 per day for your accommodation, food and transport. If you add that up per week, it's £168. So you times that by the amount of weeks that you stay there for. So if you did want to get an individual quote for the amount of weeks that you did want to do, please feel free to email our team and we can explain how you can get one of these. So firstly, the food. This is £8 per day. So we'll be providing your breakfast, lunch and dinner from Monday to Friday, which is all cooked and provided by our chefs. And they make a really nice mix of kind of typical Sri Lankan cuisine and delicacies as a huge part of obviously visiting a new country like Sri Lanka is trying the local food. And luckily it is very, very delicious here as well. We also can cater for any dietary requirements. So vegetarian, vegan, any intolerances or allergies, just let us know and we'd be able to cover that for you. But with the food, honestly, people enjoy it so much. They end up bringing most of the recipes home to show their family. Our chefs and we also are really happy to sort of offer cooking lessons to you guys. And we can also book lessons with other chefs in the area as well. So you can really pick up some great skills when you're there. The next one is accommodation, which is £10 per day. So we actually have our own Western style volunteer house where you guys will be staying. It's like a dormitory style, really. So it's two to six people per room. Same gender dorms with ensuite bathroom, AC. Um, we have a big rooftop dining area where we have our meals and social events. We do like movie nights, quiz nights and so on. There's also a big hammock space and a place to relax as well. So um, it's a really cool place to be staying. The house is also wall and gated with a security guard. Um, this is just there for extra peace of mind. Uh, Sri Lanka is a very safe country to travel to. We haven't had any problems in the past. And the best thing about the house is it's literally located 50 meters away from the beach. So you can get there really nice and easily. Um, there's lots of bars, restaurants, cafes and shops, touristy things to do, museums. And also you can go surfing every day as well, which is obviously available really, really easy for you guys. And the last living cost is the transport. So this is six pound per day. So we'll be taking you to and from all your different projects. 
in our own vehicles, which are driven by our drivers. So you have that guarantee of safety and they just know exactly where they're going as well. So it makes it really nice and easy for you. So that's the living cost. The last thing I quickly wanted to cover today was the fundraising part of the trip, because this can be a really beneficial thing for you guys. So the first thing to mention with the fundraising is that we're going to be giving you lots of help and support with ideas, showing you how to plan them and then promote them. We also will put you in contact with other people from your societies and universities and colleges to let you know who's doing the program and you can actually work together for the fundraising, planning kind of bigger events and getting more people, more people involved. <clears throat> and what is required is for each volunteer to fundraise £75 per week that they're there volunteering for. So if you did a two week trip, 75 times two is £150. If you did four weeks or more, the maximum you need to fundraise is 300. So if you did, like say, like an eight week volunteering, you just need to fundraise a maximum of 300. And this money will be going directly towards the program in the form of equipment and facilities. And you can start fundraising from the day you sign up to the day you go on your trip to Sri Lanka. And it will be paying for like books and pens for the children, school uniforms, turtle tanks, trees to plant and so on. So you'll see how it's all implemented when you're in the country. Anything you fundraise over your target, we can actually give that back to you, which you can then use for your flight cost. So the more you fundraise, the more you can save yourself on the journey there and back. And typical flight prices are ranged around sort of 450 to 600 pounds. Of course, we'll be helping you find the best ones available. But lots of volunteers that do get started early on their fundraising sort of around now only end up spending about £100 or less on their flights. So it is a really, really great way to save a bit of money. So that's pretty much everything from me today. Um, firstly, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching through this presentation, and I hope it all made sense. Please feel free to now take the next step and actually get involved as well. So check out our website. This is www.traveltier.co.uk. Uh, you can look through all the information here. There's lots of program videos and other information about the tours that we run as well. On the top right of the screen, you'll see a start your adventure button. That's where you can basically apply to find out a little bit more information. But also feel free to give us an email or a call as well. And we can actually run through all of it there. Um, so I'm just going to jump off the presentation in a second. But <clears throat> I'm just going to answer some frequently asked questions that people do wonder throughout these sort of experiences. So like the first one is, can I get involved in multiple programs? Absolutely. You can choose how many weeks of each program you would want to do. Let's say two weeks wildlife, two weeks English, five weeks wildlife, one week English. It's up to you. You can select which is best. <clears throat> can you come out for multiple trips? That's correct. You can visit Nepal, Sri Lanka and the Maldives within your same trip. But as the registration fee lasts for life, you can always come back and go out again if you wanted to, um, like the years after and so on. Can you bring a friend? Absolutely. We have lots of people that come along with friends. They don't have to be part of the same uni, just over the age of 18, like I said earlier on. Um, other questions are about like fundraising support and how we help you. So we'll be giving you lots of ideas before you actually go on the trip. We'll have a fundraising meeting and a next steps call with you to run through all of this. Um, other sort of questions. Um, if you do have any more, I think it's probably best you guys send it across if you have any more personal questions, but feel free to, like I say, apply on our website to ask them. Um, so thank you very much for watching today and I hope you have a good day. Cheers.